<laughs> What's up, guys? Yeah, no, no J today. You get the, uh, you get the less interesting version. You get the boring side of Top Clack. You get me instead. He thought it was gonna be Jay, but it was me all along. Quackums. <laughs> I am indeed on the mic. G DJ Quack in the house, some call me. <laughs> Gio, thank you so much for the 43 months, man. A real OG. If you're asking if you should buy the Clippa or the Tin, I think the answer is pretty obvious. <laughs> the Tin may be three times the cost, but it's also probably about three times the board. <laughs> One creative mind. What's up, man? Glad to see you around. I, I'm with Neb on this one. Since I got the tin, I, I, I've swapped it out a couple times for a day or two here and there, but it's pretty nice. I just keep going back to it. It's really, it's really hard to break away from it, man. It really is. Siege, thank you so much for the sub, man. Came here to watch a VOD, but there's a stream. There is. Uh, there kind of is. It's a, it's sort of an impromptu stream. I guess not really. It's been planned a few days in advance at least, but. You know me, my, uh, my streaming schedule is, is quite sporadic these days, so I, I just try to do things when I can and when I have the energy and I'm in the right state of mind. And today seems like a pretty good day. Jay indeed does like to keep the store and Top Clack separate. Yes, they are completely different entities, so we might as well. You get the better looking handsome part of Top Clack. Have you seen Jay? Oh my gosh. I have not looked at you in so long. What's up with that hair? Will it stay? My hair? Oh, my hair does look really goofy right now. I'm sorry. I Okay, so here's the thing. And I mentioned this on uh, on, on the show on a Friday. But uh, I, I'm kind of... I'm growing my hair out. And I'm in this weird stage of like it's not long enough. And it's not short enough. So it just looks dumb. So, uh, you, you gotta bear with me on this one, Neb. I'm sorry. I know I look like a hobo. I'm gonna trim up the beard pretty soon, but uh, the hair I'm gonna keep growing out for a bit longer and then kind of see where that gets me. I want to see if I can get it to my shoulders, uh, mainly because I've never had, like, actually long hair, and I, and I want to try it once before I inevitably start balding, which is pretty inevitable. <laughs> beard looking glorious as usual. Thanks, man. Lunar Sama for 36 months. Thank you so much, man. Glad to have you around. You just want to stroke my beard instead of hearing the deep thock of your key, huh? Damn. I mean... It's pretty strokeable. Spindrift. This is a spindrift, yes. To anyone that, anyone that cares, I am drinking a... Uh, a lemon spin drift, which is amazing. I love this this beverage. Absolutely delightful, refreshing. Like three calories, literally three calories. Is this a fiel? No, this is the uh, this is the tinned. This is the tinned. I do have a fiel though. I do. I have the whole mechanisk lineup, the whole thing, every every board. And the water cycle started all over again. You just went back to short hair and shaved your facial hair, and now apparently you look more homeless. Oh man. I feel like I always look homeless, but I feel like I also need facial hair. Otherwise, you get like eight more chins down here, like thirty chins. Keep do. What's up? Spindrift is absolutely bay. Yes. Excited to hear my take on this keep. Yeah, I, I'm excited to check it out too. I know a couple other uh, streamers have checked them out already. Um, to be honest, I haven't even watched those, so I have no idea what anyone else's opinion of this board is yet. So, uh, yeah, it should be a pretty good time. I 
I'll officially start in just a few moments here. I want to wait for uh, some more people to roll in. So I don't have to explain uh, what I'm doing today too many times. Cute wrist rest. Isn't it adorable? I freaking love this wrist rest. It's spectacular. I need to do a better job of cleaning it, apparently. But yeah, this, rest has, this wrist rest has been with me for quite a while. The only thing I dislike about this wrist rest, and uh, I, I totally wasn't expecting it because I thought I got my order in right, but I apparently uh, misjudged some stuff, is uh, it's it's a little long for a 60%. I'm, I'm a big fan of 60%, but this is a 65% uh, or 75%, I guess, rather, wrist rest. Works for both. So it should actually be uh, lined up fairly well with the GMMK Pro, so that'd be kind of cool. But yeah, I wish, I wish this was just a little bit shorter. Just a little bit shorter to match a 60%. Because I feel like, even when I'm using wrist rests and I'm using them with boards larger than a 60% wrist, or 60% board, the wrist rest itself can still be 60% and it feels like totally fine. Because you just put it over the typing cluster anyways. You don't necessarily need it over, you know, your arrow keys or your, uh, you know, your numpad for, per se, if you're using a, a larger board. So I, I, I'm a big fan of 60% wrist rest personally. And this one's I freaking love it I just wish it were a little bit uh, a little bit less wide Tin do be looking cute though does it have different top options I don't think so I think the first run was just uh, just this way just the standard I don't think there was an HHKB or a winkyless option but I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, those in the future. like a big teddy bear i'll take it i feel like that's a that's a definite compliment and i'm okay with that do you remember seeing the red fiel it's a build stream yep yep well not quite red actually it's i mean i guess it's sort of red but it is like mostly somewhat red it's kind of hard to explain it's easier to show because this is a very this is a very particular color that they call ultra hot which uh, is, of course, somewhat red, but to me, it's just—it's almost like a like an ultra vivid pink. It's kind of ridiculous, and it really does look like that bright in person too. Pretty spectacular. GMK Noel did turn out very nice. I like it quite a bit. All right. Well, I, I guess since uh, it doesn't seem like this is going to be a particularly high viewer count stream, I'll go ahead and explain what I'm I got going on today. So basically, um, as you might be able to tell from the title, Gloria sent me a, a bit of a care package, I guess if you will. Um, they asked if I wanted to check out the new GMMK Pro, which is their kind of pseudo-custom 75%, I guess you could call it. Uh, I said sure. And so they sent one over, uh, as well as a bunch of accoutrements, um, which I'll be kind of going through as well. Some of them, you know, maybe pretty minor, and some of them more, maybe more interesting. Um, but that's what we have going on today. So we're going to do a little bit of an unboxing. And I have, while well, I've opened the main box that they, they shipped it on, I haven't actually opened... Uh, any of the stuff inside of the box. So all of this is going to be new to me, completely initial, raw, first impressions, as usual. This is not sponsored. Um, I'm not being paid for this. Uh, they just asked if I wanted to check it out. I said, sure. You guys know me. I'm always honest. I'll, I'll give it to you straight. If you have questions at all about anything throughout this stream, definitely let me know. Feel free to ask away, and I'll give you my, uh, my live feedback in person. So pretty much we're just going to be unboxing a bunch of stuff today, and uh, we'll probably throw some switches in the keyboard as well as some uh, some caps, and we'll take it for a bit of a test drive. I believe it's hot swap, so it should be a relatively quick assembly process. But again, if you have any questions about anything, this keyboard or other keyboards, or just otherwise in general, feel free to ask away. I'll be uh, I'll be scanning chat all stream. I'll leave my wrist dress up here so you guys can look at how adorable it is, though. I am worth like 100 normal users. I'd say you're probably worth like 250 normal users. Yep, 
yeah, the Ultra Hot is definitely... It feels more pink in person. It feels more red in pictures. I freaking love it either way. That was indeed the Ultra Hot Fiel, yeah. E Ultra Hot. Calibrate your monitor. Yeah, I mean, if if everyone in the community had a calibrate, I've, I've often thought that if everyone was using like completely calibrated gear, if uh, if if colors in the community would ever turn out different than uh, they would like these days, where people most people don't really calibrate their monitors. Don't talk to me about color monitor calibration. I won't. I won't. I will not. Instead, we will uh, we'll check out some uh, some stuff. I'm gonna kind of go through this not necessarily quickly, but uh, you know with with a, a little bit of haste because there is quite a few things in this box. This box is massive. I can't even show you guys on stream. That's how big the shipping box was. So uh, there's quite a few things in here. But uh, we'll we'll get through this and we'll uh, we'll we'll save the keyboard for last. That way I can just go ahead and, and put switches in it and stuff towards the end. And that'll give uh, people that want to kind of come in and show up just for that a little bit more time to get in here as well. The frustrating thing about being part of the Keep community is that everything keeps going up in price and everything is always sold out. So annoying. Yeah, it's interesting. You think that, you know, gaining more people in the community, we would try to scale more accordingly. And I think a lot of times we do, but the reality is a lot of our community vendors are still one, two, and maybe three man operations. and. Uh, not all of them are full-time vendors either. A lot of them still have part-time or full-time jobs. And, uh, you know, we just don't quite have the manpower to service how immensely large the community has grown over the last couple of years. Um, I do think we'll reach a point where it'll be a lot more stable and we'll probably have more full-time vendors, more full-time multi-team vendors. Um, and we'll be able to crank out a lot more and be able to hit those, uh, those much larger MOQs to hopefully start bringing prices down because that like you mentioned the the price is going up on a lot of things i feel like it's kind of it's kind of going both ways because a lot of the higher end stuff is becoming more and more expensive and uh you know some things are still quite limited despite how large the community is but at the same time um on the other end of the spectrum we're also seeing a lot of really cool kind of more budget and entry level options such as you know the nk65 the upcoming nk87 uh stuff like the kb67 light uh, you know, the, the upcoming Bauer light, like a lot of these, uh, kind of, you know, more entry level, often injection molded boards, um, we're starting to see more of, and I think it's, you know, freaking amazing because these are the kind of boards that, you know, the, your average user, your normal keyboard enthusiast is going to be buying. You know, we see all these super premium boards like the tin or your, you know, your key cults, your TGRs, etc. Those are all super awesome products, but you know, the people that are buying these are often, you know, a small portion of the actual keep community. And uh, the boards that are, you know, $200 or less or $150 or less or $100 or less, you know, these are the boards that are a lot more accessible for the vast majority of people, at least coming into the hobby. Okay, some of these things look like they have been opened before, and I'm assuming these are probably just, uh, like, damaged packages that they reserve for instances like this. Where they can just send, um, you know, streamers, content creators, and reviewers these kind of things, which is totally fine. It doesn't bother me at all. Um, I'm assuming all this stuff is is totally fine still. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna start going through some of this in absolutely no particular order because there are so many things. After one more sip of lovely Spindrift, of course. I feel like there's more in stock these days. There's definitely more in stock of some things. I mean, I guess it's always, like, the key keyboard community is really trendy, right? There's always going to be, like, products that are super trendy at one point in time, and they kind of die out. Uh, you know, a lot, a lot of stuff goes through this, this phase in the keyboard community. KBD67 R2 Lite is really good. Yeah, I'm planning on getting one as well. Where did you buy that desk mat? Uh, this this was actually sent to me uh, courtesy of Kinetic Labs. Kinetic Labs, uh, one of the uh, the newer up and coming vendors in the keyboard community. I definitely suggest you, you check them out because uh, the owner is, is super duper nice. 
Um, I've, I've actually talked with him quite a bit. He sent me uh, several things to check out just to you know get my thoughts on and so I can show people. Um, you know, including I actually had a, a stream where he sent me a care package just a couple months back, I believe, and we got to check out a lot of the products that they have in stock. A lot of really cool stuff. Um, I actually just made a pretty big uh, order through them to uh, to get some some uh, key switch cases. Or containers, I guess, whatever you want to call them. I really like them. But yeah, Kinetic Labs. Shout out to them. Do you think putting foam in a keyboard will be such a passing trend? I don't know. That's a tough question, right? Because uh, I think there's the community is kind of split. So there's kind of like two main camps where like a lot of people like to use foam in their boards and a lot of boards come with foam um, with the intent to use it. But on the other end of the spectrum, a lot of people I feel think that if you have to use foam in a keyboard, it, it might not be designed well enough and it might as well just be designed better. Um, I think foam is absolutely not necessary on almost every keyboard. And I wish, and I hope it stays that way. I don't want it to be necessary. I don't like, I honestly, I don't like when foam is like inherently part of the design. I prefer if it's more of like an optional thing that you can throw in, but if a keyboard's gonna be like a lot worse without it, it I feel like it's just kind of a bummer. So I guess you could you could put me in the camp of, uh, you know, if, if, if you have to use foam, the keyboard just might not be designed well enough. If I think it's a passing trend, I don't know. Probably. I mean, I think as we move forward and the hobby grows and we get better at designing and, you know, we start to scale up uh, manufacturing and, you know, there's there's a lot of money in this community um, and a lot of money to be made from, um, uh, you know, for designers and, and these vendors and stuff. And I think that it's only a matter of time before we start seeing people put a lot more time and I don't want to say people don't put time and effort into it because that would be absolutely a big slap in the face of designers but I feel like once there's a lot more money into it and people can start designing a lot more like full time we'll probably start seeing a lot more like really intricate designs that you know people take acoustics into account on as opposed to just being like let's add some foam if that makes sense I feel like that was kind of just a rant but hopefully my point came across Foam can definitely make hollow boards sound better. Yeah, I'm not saying foam is necessarily bad. I have I have multiple boards that currently have foam in them, and it's totally fine. But the thing about foam, and this is true of both case foam and plate foam, but I, th I think it's way more true for plate foam, is that when you have the foam in the board, it takes away a lot of the character of the actual board. Because then you just get the foam, like the, sa the sound and the feel of the foam kind of neutralizes everything that the board stands for. And I'm not really a big fan of that. Um, like I did the Box 75 recently and I, I like the board. I think it's a cool board, it's fine. But the foam kind of removes what the board otherwise sh could, should, and would be. And it kind of just makes it feel like every other board and sound like every other board that has foam in it. And it's like, you know, at that point, like, why use that board? And of course, the answer is going to be different for other people. If you like the aesthetics, that could be all you need, you know. Uh, me, I'm a little bit more greedy. I want it all, apparently. <laughs> Return of solenoids? Oh, man. That'd be interesting. All right, so let's start uh, casually opening some of this stuff. So the first thing I grabbed here is uh, a, a, a coiled cable. This is in the, what they're calling the Nebula color. This is an artisan cable for mechanical keyboards. And again, this is uh, the first time I've seen any of this stuff. So this is all just as new to you as it is to me. Um, I didn't even know they, they made these. <laughs> if I'm being honest, it sounds, there's metal in here. So this is, um, okay, so it's an aviator cable. It has an aviator connection. I like that. Okay, cool. Let me, um, crap, do I have my knife in here? I think I forgot my knife in my uh, my other room. I have to get uh, have to get crafty with some scissors. I'm gonna kind of ruin this packaging, and that's totally okay.
it's it's not nebulent, it's nebula. <laughs> the boxes are backwards and it's bugging you? The boxes are backwards? What do you mean? The boxes are backwards. Can you elaborate? I don't understand. Um, anyways, here's the here's this cable. It opens the wrong. Oh, I see what you're saying. That is that is kind of strange, huh? Okay, so this is this is kind of cool. This looks like it's just a little quick start guide, which I assume just says uh, connect the cable. Because <laughs> how complicated could it be, right? So bam, simple little aviator cable here. I'm glad that these kind of things are starting to catch on more because I'm a big fan, as you can probably see from uh, what I'm using now, which is not an aviator, but it's a, uh, a Limo connector. Um, I'm a big fan of, of cables like this, um, especially when you can kind of just quick swap them out. Uh, the aviator cable, maybe not quite as quickly, but uh, I'm still a big fan of, of bulky connectors like this. Maybe I should use this with the uh, with the keyboard. It's USB C. Okay, good. Nice, nice. So bam, there you go. I wish there were a little bit more slack here. Just my personal uh, personal comment on this. I like the color a lot. This is, this is very much for a, a very specific um, look to where obviously it'll sit like this. So that way it's, it's very kind of straight. I think that's the, uh, the intended use case here. So there we go. We got the cable. We'll, uh, we'll plug that in. A bit later. I need to start a, a packaging pile over here. This will look good with the NK65 Entry Edition Purple. Nebula. I actually like this color quite a bit. Good morning, Ozai. Good morning? Wait, what time? Where are you at? You must be across the world. I really should have brought my knife in here. This cable will get hate just because it's glorious. I know. I mean, Look, that's just how things are going to go, right? Some people are going to hate on this and that or whatever. I don't really care. Um, I'd rather them not, or at the very least, keep your keep your negative thoughts to yourself. Because I know, like, not everyone's going to like everything, right? That's just the way it is. What the heck? Is this a switch opener? I guess I should have read the packaging first, huh? This is, in fact, a switch opener. It's just a little plastic one. Um, hey, look, here's a switch. Oh, it looks like it opens uh, MX and Kale. That's kind of interesting. Not bad, actually. I don't really care for the plastic ones just because of how light they are. I kind of want a bit more heft in my, uh, my openers, which is why I usually use the key box. But this is fine. This is fine for a switch opener. Seems to work relatively well, at least. Ha 
How durable is it? I mean, probably not very. This is just plastic. It's extremely light. But I mean, it's it's probably a very... I have no idea how much this costs. It's probably very cheap, though, I assume. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't... Unless this was only, like, a dollar or two and it came with your order or something, I probably wouldn't buy this. I would probably just... It depends on how many switches you're planning on opening, right? I open a lot of switches. I like something really nice. I like the Key Boss, which is, I think it's like around $20, which could be a lot to some people, but... <clears throat> yeah, this is... This is $10? Okay, if, if this is $10, I would I would definitely not buy this. I would I would just invest the other 7 or $8 or whatever it is and get the, the Key Boss. The Key Opener from Key Boss, which I think is just a way better, way better opener. There's lots of switch openers in the keyboard community, though, and honestly, most of them work just fine. Um, which leads me to the next product, which will probably be a similar vein here. This is a uh, this is a switch puller, and to be honest, I have about a million of these. Um, we'll see. We'll see if this one's any different. I'm gonna assume it's it's gonna not be. It looks like a switch opener, glorious branded. Um, it feels like the rest of my Switch openers, which is fine. I mean, it's no real different than, um, let's see, here's, here's Kinetic Labs, here's a Rama opener. Um, it's, it's, it's about the same as a, as a Rama opener. Maybe slightly thicker. Rama, op Rama openers, maybe a little thinner. Uh, this is a Kinetic Labs opener. This one has, um, this kind of coating on it. It's almost wax coating. I don't know what to call this, but uh, I mean, they're, they all work totally fine, and I'm and I'm sure this one will be just the same. Nothing totally special there. Apiary reviewed their stuff about a week ago. Switch opener was a bit meh for the money. Yeah, I can believe it. I don't remember like everyone that got the uh, the the same packages I did. I know, I know. I think Nathan got one. Teah Tim, Teah Te Nathan. It's, it's combining his names. Teah Types. I don't think he goes by Nathan Kim anymore. But uh, Teah Types. I believe he got one, and I know some other bigger streamers did. I was a little late to the party because you know obviously we're uh, we're we are much more humble in our viewer count. I guess you could say, to put it nicely. We're not as cool or important as a lot of the bigger streamers, and I totally understand. Quite pricey, apparently. Yeah, I would I would not pay ten dollars for one of these. I think it works fine, but I would I would shell out a few more dollars and get something uh, more premium and metal. Um, I mean, th this is fine if as long as the uh, the switch opener. I should probably just pull up the website and check out the prices myself. If the switch opener or the switch puller is more expensive than other switch pullers. This this probably isn't worth it either. But it might just come with stuff, right? Maybe this is just an add-on for the uh, the keyboard. Like you get it automatically. I'm trying to find the uh, oh here we go. Explore all gear and products. Where do I even... I don't know where I see these. Oh, wait. Ah, here. Here we go. Okay, so one of these is $8. Um, which seems about on par with the other ones in the community, I, I suppose. So this is this is an okay buy. As, as, as reasonable as the others, I guess. Switch opener. I, I'd probably shell out something uh, for something more. Let's see what else we got. Okay, we have a, we have a keycap puller here. Yeah. Oh, thank thank you for the link. Yeah, I'm just uh, I, I'm on their official site right now, which is just pcgamingrace.com slash collection slash accessories hyphen keyboard. And I think I think everything I have is is covered here. So yeah, this is the uh, this is the ergonomic keycap puller. 
And uh, you know what? I'm just gonna go get my knife because I don't want to keep using these scissors and, and butchering all this packaging. I will be right back, guys. 10 seconds. Now I'll be back. Definitely better than a 3D printed one. This, uh, this, yeah, I'd agree with that. I don't think I've ever used a 3D printed opener I was happy with. This at least opens the switches consistently. I just don't like how light it is. I like a little heft on my uh, switch openers. If you're paying 20, pay a bit more and get the Nutcracker. Yeah, the Nutcracker's fine, too. I like the Nutcracker. I like pretty much all of, like, the higher-end metal ones. I think they're all good. Alex Odos, what's up, man? Hope you're doing well today. Glad to see you around. Are you taking off, Neb? Are you, is, are you saying bye because I left? <laughs> Is that the goat knife? I don't think it's a goat knife. This is a uh, Spider Co. Tenacious. Not a particularly expensive knife, but I wanted something pretty decent quality without breaking the bank, and this was recommended to me, and I've been in love with it so far. It's delightful. You're well just sleepy? I feel that, man. I was catching up on sleep last night. I feel pretty good today, thankfully. You want a knife to open? But this is this is like all this gets used for too. Is like opening packages and other like assorted stuff. I pretty much just you know it's a utility knife almost. All right, so here we go. Keycap puller. Uh, it looks about like every other keycap puller. I wasn't really expecting any of these uh, kind of minor add-on products to blow me away, and you know it, it's kind of unfair to assume they would. Um, so yeah. I'm not too worried about it, but you know, it's a keycap puller. It'll pull keycaps just like pretty much every other keycap puller. Totally fine, nothing fancy. Unless you just happen to like this very particular style of grip, which uh, I haven't really seen yet. But we can confirm, just pull the keycap with it. We're good, guys. They also sent along uh, some stabilizers. Maybe we'll use that in the um, the board. I don't know if the board comes with stabilizers, but we'll uh, we'll save the stabilizers for a bit later. Um, there's also this toy. Uh, the packaging seems to be a bit messed up because this is probably a either a B stock item or the packaging was just damaged. They didn't want to you know sell it. But this looks like a little toy, a glorious, a glorious panda collectible desk toy. Very interesting. Warning, choking hazard. Not suitable for children under 36 months, so sorry guys. Okay, we have a little, we have a little math problem here, guys. Look at this. All right. So apparently a. Uh, a, a ferocious looking panda plus a switch equals this toy. Um, I'm a big fan of stuff like this. As you might be able to tell from behind me, I have uh, I have Gatoron. You probably can't see him very well actually in this small frame right now. But I have a Gatoron up there. I have the uh, the olive plushie up there that has the little uh, pimento in it. I love these kind of little toys and stuff. Um, most people probably think it's cheesy. Um, it, it totally is, but I don't care. 
Um, this seems like a pretty simple toy here. Nothing, nothing crazy going on. It's, it's, it's just as, as it seems. And that's totally fine. It's kind of quirky looking, but it's kind of cute as well. <laughs> How on earth is that a choking hazard? I don't know. I was trying to see if it like comes apart or does anything, but it seems like it's just this. There's like a hole in here and it's kind of soft as well, but it's relatively hard. I don't know. It's just, it's just a little toy and I'm totally okay with that. I'll add all the little toys to my uh, collection. Press it. I don't think anything happens when you press it. Does it make noise? No, I don't think it does anything. I think it's just this. And I'm, I'm okay with that, actually. Try to put it in your mouth for, for science. Okay, I have a pretty big mouth. I don't even think this would fit in my mouth. I don't know. I'm not the streamer that eats stuff. I'm not one of those people. I wonder if they chuckled subbing the creator of the Holy Panda this toy. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? All right. Next up, we have a, uh, a lube brush. Um, I've been using uh, my Kinetic Labs uh, branded one, which is just like a, a, a standard kind of size zero. But I've been uh, using and liking that one. Oh, this one doesn't have a... Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know how it's a choking hazard. If your kids choke on that, they deserve it. Oh my gosh. Fair enough. I I don't yeah I don't see how that would be a choking hazard. To be totally honest with you, um, there was nothing. There wasn't really anything in the package either that I would consider a choking hazard. Who are they selling these two hippo babies? Maybe. Pretty straightforward thing. It's a brush. Just say what size this is. It's probably the same size, probably a zero or something. Double zero. This is okay, so it's a double zero. It's totally fine. So it's a little bit, a little bit smaller, I believe, than the Kinetic Labs one. Which I'm okay with because that one's actually a little big for me. So bam, there you go. They have brushes. Totally fine. Nothing special, but totally fine. Make sure you guys are staying hydrated. <laughs> they're, yes, they're selling them to pandas, yes. Okay, now we're now we're starting to get into uh, some more interesting stuff. Oh, apparently there's a sticker in there too. Little uh, little panda there to go along with our good friend Chi. Is the brush a choking hazard too? I don't know. Let's let's look. think so I can't see anywhere of mention of choking hazard so a brush not a choking hazard jokes aside let's uh it's a poking hazard yes thank you fantastic all right this is the uh this is the wrist dress this is a 10 keyless wrist dress by the look of it it's in uh, the onyx colorway which I have no idea what it's gonna be probably what like a gray like a, like a matte gray or something Guess we'll find out. The 
It's just safe to eat confirmed. You guys are silly. But I appreciate you guys. Oh man, I'm already destroying this package. I just destroy packaging. All right, guys, I'm not gonna try to pretend and hide it any longer. I destroy packaging. I don't care about it. I just don't. I'm, I'm usually very. I just I just tear stuff because I don't I don't keep any of this stuff. I don't keep the packaging. I just don't. Okay, looks like this comes with uh, a sticker as well. Yep, that's a sticker. Another uh, quick start guide, not a quick start guide, sorry. It's a link to the quick start guide for all their stuff. Put these uh, stickers aside and I'll put those in my enormous bag of stickers that I have later. Okay, this is, this is kind of interesting. Wow, look at look at look at the angle. Look at the angling of this. This is this is actually quite quite fascinating. It's kind of like a little uh, um, angle right there. It's very very strange, very different. I need a I need a much larger board to test this with, but I suppose not. Quick start guide for a wrist rest. <laughs> hey man, sometimes you just need to, to start quickly, alright? All packaging should go in the recycling? Yeah, no, it, it's all gonna get recycled. We recycle here, don't worry. I put it on the table? I don't know. I mean, it's not it's not actually a quick start guide, right? But it, it, it's a link to their quick start guide. GloriousPCGaming.com slash quick start. So maybe if, if you want, you can you can go look at the quick start guide for this, if there is one. Um, with that said, this actually does look pretty nice and it's, it's very, very smooth. It has these kind of cuts here. I'm not really sure what the cuts are supposed to be, if that's just a design thing or maybe there's something more to that than it has these, what are effectively bump-ons. These are really soft, actually, interesting. Okay. So yeah, definitely, definitely kind of nice there. Uh, again, I wish it were smaller, but that's just because I'm, I'm one of those people, and I like boards smaller than TKL. But this, this actually feels okay. I'm, I, I'm okay with this. Yeah, that's not bad. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of hard to mess up a wrist rest, to be honest, as long as it's not too overly tall. This one's not. This one's about 19 millimeters, I think the package said. So, uh, fairly, which is a relatively standard front height for a lot of keyboards in the community. Cuts are supposed to prevent help or prevent warping. All right, thank you so much. Cool. There you go. So that's why we have the cuts there. I never really thought about that before. My small brain could never wrap my head around that concept. With that said, I mean, just look how adorable Chi is. So, that's cool. I can use this on, on uh, some other boards. Some larger boards, maybe. Alright, speaking of large... Um, this is a lube station. And this box is quite enormous, uh, as you can probably see. Good evening to you as well, Visionary. How you doing, man? Glad to have you around. Quick question asks, I exist. Do you guys rest your palm or your wrist on the wrist rest? Hmm. I think I rest my uh, my wrist. Yeah, my wrist. I guess maybe a hype. No, no, I'd say my wrist. Kind of like right, right here. Just like this area. It's so like not quite my wrist, but like the start of my hand, the base of my hand. What a glorious evening. Yeah, I mean, hopefully. We haven't gotten to the keyboard yet, uh, but we're, we're slowly but surely getting there. It's it's two more things away. So we're going to open up this. Uh, this is a really it's kind of a hefty lubing station.
How many switches does it hold? We'll find out. Uh, looks like 30, 36? 36 bodies, 36 stems, 36 springs. Hmm. Okay, okay. Fits other stuff too. So it holds, uh, you know, your, it holds your brushes, your switch opener, your switch. Let's just, well, now that we have all these things, let's, uh, let's just take this for a test drive. Uh, kind of, shall we? That's huge for a few steps. I know it's it's definitely a different a different kind, I would say. Um, not necessarily a bad thing. I actually really like the way it looks. It's, it's really attractive. So there you go. The packaging is. You know, quite a bit bigger than it itself, but it's certainly not tiny either. Are these? Is this? This is meant for springs? Do you just put? How do you even? I'm a little confused on that one. Where's my box? Oh, here we go. Put the springs in there. Okay, yes, yeah, so that's the spring section. This is the uh, this is where you put a lube vial. So I'm assuming their lube fits in there. Or this this is this is the G lube. This is a different. This is the G lube spot, which is their lube. This is the lube vial spot. Lube brushes. Switch opener. Okay, so that one just slots in there. Uh, what do we got over here? Tweezers. Switch puller. Switch, switch puller. What do you use? A oh, switch puller. I'm stupid. Okay. How does the switch puller fit in there? This is the switch puller, right? Am I crazy? I don't know. I don't know if there's like an intended way for that to sit in there. Do I have any vials that'll fit in here? Here's some lube. Oh, that's too big. This one's too big. The much smaller novel keys ones will obviously fit. My oil will not fit in the vial spot. So I guess these are going to be very dependent on how your uh, how big your your stuff actually is. But apparently this will fit the G lube, which I don't think I, I got any of, which is kind of unfortunate because that's like the one the one thing I actually asked for. Um, but they might have just forgot it. But I, I did want to try their lube, and maybe I, I still will in the future. Um, with that said, I, I do like the way this looks. I don't know if. Um, I'd want the switches. Oh, I guess they. Hmm. They don't. They don't clip in. I guess they just rest in there. Is that like all switches? You can't even use kale kale switches in here. The kale latch style, apparently. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. I I don't I don't like lube stations that don't uh, clip your switches in. I'm not a big fan of it. Like, I'll be honest with you, I don't use anything fancy. Like, this is my normal lube station. Just a simple 3D print, 10 by 10. It holds switches in just fine. Um, they're really easy to pop out. You just push them from the back, and they come right out. Easy peasy. Simple, there's no features or anything, but it's, you know, it's small, it does a hundred switches, and uh, I've been using this for years. Happily. Uh, this looks fancy, and it looks really nice, um, but I don't think I'd ever actually use this. Um, switches just kind of fall on them. I like the idea of, of holders for this kind of stuff, but 
I tub lube my springs because I think it's just more consistent and more effective anyways, so I don't need areas for uh, springs. The the stem area is kind of cool, but at the same time, I like a little bit more uh, dynamic range when I'm lubing. Um, and so just to have them sit in there, I feel like, while that might work for some people, it's not ideal for me. I much prefer uh, just holding them like this so I can... Uh, I can, you know, I can move around a lot more. I think you get a lot more um, consistency on your stems if you actually can see all the way around them without having to go through some crazy lube station acrobatics, as it were. So I, I'm not a, I'm not the biggest fan of this. I, I probably wouldn't use this. Other people might get a lot more use out of this than I would. Um, it's cool, but I, I wish that this is this is a deal breaker for me. Not having switches clipped in is is just not. Not how I want to do it, unfortunately. Yeah, they don't go in the other way either, so. There you go. That might be cool for some people, but gotta be honest, I'm not a fan of that one. I'll probably wind up giving this uh, to someone that'll use it more than I will. Comes with bump-ons too, it looks like. Maybe you need to take the switch apart. Maybe they didn't want to risk clip in when it doesn't have the back open. That's true. I don't, I don't know. To, to me, like, a lube station is all about functionality versus anything else. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what color it is. You know, I don't care how beautiful it is. You know, it needs to be able to do the one thing that it's there for. And while this would work, this would this would be more of a hassle for me than a, a more traditional loop station that I already have. Yeah, Static Age says, I lube a stem in Jeweler's Claw and tub lube the springs. It's a waste of time to put them in a holder like that. I completely agree. That's, that's what I do as well. I mean, I guess that's just, you know, other people, other people have other preferences, I suppose. That's just the way it is. But I, I completely agree with you there. Tub lubing springs just makes way more sense than not tub lubing springs. And uh, I like the jeweler's claw because you just get way more way more range out of it. My roommate's dog is barking. Sorry if it's loud. Grabby friend, yeah. Try taking the switch apart first. You want me to use it? I don't think that's going to be the issue. Or maybe maybe it is, and maybe I'm just stupid. All right, we'll try taking the switch apart here. We'll uh, open it with our little opener here. This is just a uh, an ultramarine switch from Mechanisk. Get the little spring in there. Um, I can't lube it because it's mostly covered. Um, I guess they they intend you to lube the inside, but I don't I don't know. I guess at the very least it can hold your springs, like if they're already, let's say you tub lube them, you can just put them in there for easier use later maybe, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a scenario where this makes a lot more sense than it probably does. Um, that pretty loosely, but it does, uh, it wouldn't hold these, if you turn this upside down they would fall out. Um, I think everything just kind of does that. Um, and again, these, yeah, these just sit in here, so there you go. I got the stem in there, the spring in there, the bottom housing. There's no place for a top housing, obviously. Unless these, I guess these, in, in, in a sense, these kind of double as a top housing, just because they sit in there, as the bottoms do. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a believer in at least this setup of moving, but I'm, I'm sure someone probably gets use out of it. This looks way too cramped for my large hands. The loop station, you mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 
it seems fine depending on who you are. For me, it's not what I would use. I guess I'm still a caveman going one by one with bowls. Hey man, I am too. Like I, I use, I use like the little, the little like uh, plastic bowls that you can like just get from Amazon for like basically pennies. Like these like cheap, like leftover, like kitchen bowls. Um, these are, these are like indispensable to me in the keyboard hobby. Uh, let's open up, actually we have a, I totally forgot about this. We're opening up this too. This is another, uh, what seems to be kind of a, a busted package, but I'm assuming the contents are totally fine. We'll open it from the bottom. This is a, uh, a cleaning kit. So I'm guessing this is to clean your keyboards and or mice. Okay, this is this is kind of interesting. What is, what is this? Alright, so there's a little brush. A little tiny little brush. Uh, microfiber cloth. I have about a million of these. And uh, a little a little blower. Oh wow, that's actually like surprisingly efficient. <laughs> okay, well this is the first time I've seen one of these in, in keyboards. Um, I guess you can technically use it for your mice as well. But that's kind of, uh, that's interesting, I suppose. <laughs> Let me just, uh, clean all these real quick. Get my beard hair all out of here, you know? Because when you have this much facial hair, let me tell you, it ends up everywhere. So yeah, pretty basic uh, little cleaning kit there. Um... I don't know, it's whatever. The brush is kind of forgettable. And the microfiber cloth, obviously, lots of things come with those. Um, this this is kind of interesting though. This is, I'll, uh, oddly enough, I bet I will get actually a fair amount of use out of this. All right, so there's that, there's a lube station. Uh, let's go with the second to last item here, the last item being the keyboard itself. Um, this is the uh, keyboard carrying case. This is compatible with the GMMK Pro. Uh, I don't know if these actually come with the keyboard. I assume this doesn't come with the keyboard. This is, this must be a separate, a separate buyable item. That's a repackaged camera cleaning kit. Kit. I I completely believe it. Completely believe it. But I mean, it's all really versatile items, right? Like you could you could call this the cleaning kit for about eight hundred billion different things, right? It's just a a semi soft bristle brush, brush, little air blower, and uh, you know, just a microfiber cloth. It's pretty pretty standard stuff. Nothing terribly revolutionary there. Um, all right, so let's open up this carrying case. And uh, I'm going to assume that this is probably really similar to all the other ones in the community. Since I apparently figure out how to open this right. Okay, I'm just, I'm just stupid, don't worry. This, uh, this smells like other packages I've received from China. Every time I get a package that's from China, I or like a product that's from China, there's a very distinct smell to it. I'm not saying it's a bad smell, but it's a very distinct smell. And uh, I'm assuming this was, you know, straight from China. Murdered ant? Yeah, sorry, gotta kill the ant. I live I live in a place where, you know, there's, there's always ants around this time of year. They're starting to come out now that it's getting warmer. Um, so this looks fairly similar to a lot of the other cases you see in the community. Uh, maybe not as much padding on the inside, but I guess you have to pick your battles because this, you know, fits a 75%, whereas a lot of the other ones are for uh, uh, 60 and 65%. Does it smell like Szechuan chicken? I wish. I don't know. I It's a very unique smell that I can't, like, I I, I don't know what, what to, like, com compare it to. I just, it's, it's incomparable. But if you've ever get, gotten, like, a package from, like, KBD fans, for example, like, just smell it. Next time you get something from KBD fans. 
It's a little brush you get with your razor that you never end up using. Yes, exactly. Duck Butter is asking uh, if I like Gateron Milky Yellows. I do, yeah. I, I think Gateron Milky Linears are all good. Uh, yellow is probably the most interesting switch, mainly because of the switch, uh, or the spring properties, rather. Almost no padding at all. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll we'll put the keyboard in here and we'll we'll take it for a bit of a, a test drive, as it were. But yeah, very little actual padding here. Probably good enough. It's it's very hard padding. I'm sure it's good enough, at the very least. And here's a little top compartment, of course, for storing your I don't know cable and switch opener and stuff like that. So there you go. There's the uh, the case. And now, onto the item that everyone probably cares a lot more about, the actual keyboard itself. So here we go. It looks like uh, this is the uh, Barebone Black Slate. US on C, 83 key. Bam, 83 keys. All right. So let's go ahead and check out this board. I'm going to get my wrist rest out of here temporarily. Say, uh, say a temporary goodbye to Chi. So we have a little bit more space to check this out. How are you guys doing today, by the way? Hopefully, very, very swell. Um, which plate does this have? I have no idea what plate this has. I, this is my first time going through any of this stuff, so you guys are you guys are along along with me on this ride. Uh, another of the same little quick start guide thing, of which I, I imagine there's actually a quick start guide for this. Okay. Uh, another another sticker. This has a this has a pretty nice heft to it actually. That's heavier than I was expecting. Right, let's see what else we have in here. Um, these must be the gaskets. Oh, op optional extra gasket strips. Due to minor variances that can occur during the machining process of your GMMK Pro, you may need to apply additional gasket strips for peak acoustic quality. For more info and applications, uh, visit this link. Um, okay, I, I don't know if I need to put these on there or if there's some already installed or if I need to there's some installed But I need to install more. I guess we'll, we'll take it apart and we'll see uh, comes with a little one of these the I hate these these are awful Little switch opener. That's stupid. Uh, this is a little switch puller, but it's probably obviously not as good as the uh, The ever so slightly nicer one of these which I prefer this design over these uh, Included cable nothing fancy uh, it is USB-C, of course, because the keyboard is, and it is braided, so it's kind of nice. It's fine. But let's just go ahead and set that aside for a moment. Yeah, I need to find out about these gaskets. Okay, looks like stabilizers are already installed. As you can see, this is the black version. All glorious branding there on the bottom. Serial number and stuff. All right. Not bad, not bad. Decent bump-ons. Okay. Are these lubed at all? The stabilizers are lubed, so they do come lubed. Very interesting. We have the, uh, the knob here. I'm a little newer to knobs, if you know what I'm saying. All right, uh, for uh, who was asking what plate this was, this does appear to be aluminum. Were there other plate options? We'll take this apart and, and, and take a look at it as well in just a moment. Uh, Mr. Petrov, thank you so much for the tier two. 29 months, all the months. 
really is, man. It really is. Thanks for stopping by, though. Hope you're doing well, man. Uh, then says, friend of mine bricked his GMMK Pro whilst fiddling around with QMK, but got a replacement through support. Well, that's good. At least they replaced it. That looks clean. Yeah, it should look pretty clean. Nothing terribly fancy, but uh, it, it does it does look pretty nice. Um, how much how much are these? These aren't like super expensive, right? I'm pretty sure that's like the kind of defining factor here. Just tell me how much the keyboard costs, please. Hundred, hundred dollars. I thought it was more than that. Is it really only a hundred dollars? It's only a hundred dollars. Wait a minute. I thought this was going to be like a hundred and seventy or something. Or am I am I crazy? Give me a second, guys. I'm just. Trying to figure out. <laughs> Maybe you would chat now. 70 to reserve plus 100 for fulfillment. Oh, it is 170. Oh, so you have to pick. Interesting. Okay. But it, it is 170, though. And 170 comes with no switches or keycaps, I assume. Which is totally my understanding. Okay, yeah, I see now. Okay, total cost of the keyboard, 170 plus shipping and handling. Your $100 reservation fee will be deducted from the total cost at order completion. Okay, so, yes, it is, it is a $170 board. Got it. All right, now to figure out what the heck is up with these gaskets. Center mount USB C. Got the knob. Honestly, really good price. Can't beat it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put some switches in it and we'll, uh, we'll put some caps on and we'll take it for a quick test drive. I'm just kind of checking out some of the uh, anodization, which looks fine. Definitely not the smoothest I've ever seen, but you gotta remember we're working with a, uh, a relatively inexpensive board here, all things considered. This is kind of... I know when, when this was first announced and teased, a lot of people were saying it was just gonna be like a worse Satisfaction 75. And it's like, yeah, of course it is. The Satisfaction 75 costs way more. It has more features. Um... Like, that's just, that's just the way it is. This is not supposed to be, like, an ultra-premium keyboard that competes with the highest end of the keyboard enthusiast market. It's not what it is, because it's just going to fall flat. It's just, it's just going to happen. This is kind of one of the products, um, why I think it's super interesting is because it kind of bridges that gap um, between, like, super OEM keyboards like you'd buy, like, uh, you know, a Corsair or a Ducky or even a normal GMMK. And, uh, you know, it kind of takes it to the next level. Um, and kind of starts to bridge that gap, starts to blur that line between the OEM boards and the customs. So that's why I was kind of curious to check this out because if it's if it's value oriented in any way, then uh, I you, you already know I'm there. I'm I'm really interested in in like the most typing experience you can get per dollar. That's more interesting to me than like super high end nice boards. Think you might grab one of these, honestly? Yeah, I mean maybe. Well, I, I, I still don't know how much I like it yet. We're going to... It looks pretty nice so far. But uh, I do want to put some switches in it, test it out. So let's go ahead and uh, let's take it apart, shall we? Because um, I'm not sure if this even has gaskets on it yet. I'm still not quite fully understanding how that goes. Can I take this off? Oh, I can. Okay. Probably don't really do a whole lot though during the building process since that's still there. Um, 
tools. Should have them installed already. All right. Well, we'll just just for the sake of this, we'll we'll take it apart just to kind of. I want to see what the internals are like, anyways. So this is uh, sort of just an excuse for that. I'm curious why I would need so many extra gaskets, right? That's that seems kind of kind of strange. If they're already applied, um, then like why? Why do I need so many more? the PC and alu plates you got had stripped threads? Really? Like the plate, like these, these plate screws? purpose of gaskets for flex or anti-ping? Uh, I mean, I guess the easy answer is it's for anti-vibration. So it kind of removes a lot of the unwanted noise and uh, feel that you might otherwise get from boards that have metal on metal contact. Um, the result, though, is that you do usually wind up getting a bit softer of a typing experience as well. So it does have a bit of a softer feel, usually. Sick fingerprint magnet. Oh, dude, totally. But I mean, what board? What board isn't these days? Let's be honest. I just expect to fingerprint up all my boards. But thankfully, I have about a million microfiber cloths, which help a lot. There's all the bottom screws off. So this is to get the top housing off. So it does look like there are already, again, gaskets installed there. Okay, oh, there's gaskets on the side too. Okay, I didn't realize that, that's pretty cool. And these are the little uh, diffusers here for the side LEDs, I'm assuming. But yeah, gaskets. Gaskets uh, kind of just all around. Nice. you love to see that. Let's take a look at uh, the rest of what we have going on here. So I'm guessing... Okay. There's a little... Uh, a JST or JST-esque connector here. I'm gonna unplug that real quick. There 
we go. <clears throat> All right, so here we go. Here's our, our plate PCB uh, assembly here. And uh, interestingly enough, it does actually screw together. This is kind of cool. This is something that I, I feel like would be cool to see more of in like hot swap um, keyboards in general is a plate PCB assembly that, that screws together just the assembly itself, like a separate from the board. Um, I think that's actually a, a cool feature. So there you go. Very connected there. Let's take a look at this bottom, as it were. Some foam that I, I could take out. I probably won't. Daughter board for the USB-C. It's actually a pretty hefty bottom, too. This thing definitely weighs more than I was expecting. How smooth is the black finish? The white ice version feels powdery. Yeah, I guess you could say this feels a little powdery as well. I've definitely felt smoother anodization, but I wouldn't call it bad. It looks consistent at the very least, which I'm cool with. Man, there's, there's a lot of gaskets in here. They really kind of went all out on the gaskets. They're like, they're everywhere. And then they have the the side gaskets too. I like I like that. I like the side ones. It's nice. So yeah, hopefully I guess I, I won't need more of these. Hopefully, you may need to apply additional gasket strips for peak peak acoustic quality. We'll we'll pretend we don't need to at least at first. All right, so there we go. We got that apart. Internals actually a little more impressive than I was expecting. There is foam. Um, you can't, I guess you can't really see it from that angle, but there is foam between the plate and the PCB. I'm not going to take that out just because it, it seems like it'd be kind of an annoyance to uh, disassemble the plate PCB assembly. Um, so I'm going to leave that in for now. We'll leave this in for now too as well. If it sounds too foamy once it's completed, I might consider taking one or both of them out. Um, remember you guys uh, probably were hearing me whine about foam at the beginning of this stream because I'm not the biggest believer in always using foam. I think it's generally okay, but it's kind of like, what's the point also? Okay, cool. go not a not a bad gasket system though I would say that's that's more than I was expecting out of a $170 board I'll give you that that's for sure I think Teha mentioned some of the plates are really tight with non-glorious stabilizers uh, Milbury says, Duroc V2s didn't fit in my aluminum plate, Everglides did. Okay. Foam is a case-by-case -case usage for me. Yeah, I feel you. Have a good one, Bevin. Hope you sleep well. You are welcome for the vibes. Thanks for being a part of it, man. Glad to have you all here. <clears throat> yeah, this is this is kind of interesting. I'm more excited to put switches in this now. <coughs> Excuse me choking on my sparkling water over here. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, put this bad boy back together and let's, let's put some switches in, shall we?
you hear guitar knobs are compatible with this. Are they? I would not know. I know nothing about guitars, actually. Very, very little. I'd like to get a second one in with a brass knob. Do they have different knobs for this? Can you like choose different knobs? The way Glorious's site is laid out kind of confuses me sometimes. And that could just be my stupidity. I'm not entirely sure, but I feel like it's really hard to get to the sections that I'm always trying to get to on this site. GMK Pro knobs. Is knobs only ten dollars? Actually, that's, that seems kind of cheap, actually. Do they come in brass? What are the other plate materials, too? Oh, here we go. GMMK Pro switch plates. Oh, they do have a brass and polycarbonate version. The polycarb plate is only $20. It's actually not too bad. The brass plate's $50. I probably wouldn't get the brass plate, personally, I think. I think aluminum tends to be better than brass for gasket mount. In my experience, that's my preference, at least. Polycarbonate would be kind of cool. Maybe I'll pick one of those up. I should try that out. I think that would probably give it a pretty nice sound. Hmm. Silver, black, and brass, $10 each. Bra the brass knobs are $10 each? That's kind of cool. That seems pretty reasonable. not going to over tighten these screws. PC versus Alu is 10 times better in the GMMK Pro. You're saying polycarbonate is 10 times better than aluminum in here? I guess I could be I could be talked into believing that, I suppose. Much quieter. Is this going to be loud? I don't actually... I don't know what switches I'm going to put in here. I don't think I have anything that's lubed on hand that isn't Novel Key's silk switches. So maybe I'll just do those, because those are lubed. The problem with those is they feel great, and they look great, but they don't sound amazing. And I, and I feel like if I put them in here, the board's just not going to sound very good and people are going to think it's because of the board. Whereas I think the board is actually probably going to sound totally fine. Um, but with those particular switches, it might not be the best, I'll just say. But unless I want to use some stock switches, I'll, I'll take a look and see what I have, but I think we'll probably settle on some silk switches because it'll be nice just to feel uh, what it's like, even if it won't be the greatest sounding board in the world. Maybe, it'll, maybe it will sound good, who knows? Maybe I'm just crazy and I'm totally overthinking this. Certainly wouldn't be the first time. I'm still pretty new to knobs on board, so I, I get like really, <laughs> I just wanna like touch it and squeeze it and you know, twist it. Push it a bit. At least with Lord lubed glory panda, yeah. Um, well, I mean, holy pandas in like all their iterations are just loud, right? Like that's kind of one of the defining factors of uh, of those particular switches is they're just like they're stupidly loud. 
just because of the uh, the mismatch stem and housing combo. Uh, Exosquid is asking, sorry, I came in late. Did you keep the stab stock? Uh, these are stock stabs. Yeah, these. this board is just like it was when I took it out of the box. I haven't even put switches in it yet. Uh, that's going to be the next step. I just took it apart, took a quick look inside, and uh, we took a little bit of a tour of the uh, the gasket system and the plate PCB assembly. It does come with stabilizers. As you can see, all four of them are in there. Um, they're lubed even. Um, I'm, I'm going to assume they're probably not lubed very well it seems like a lot of lube so these could actually be pretty quiet it's just a lot of lube but again it's not necessarily a bad thing we'll leave those in there because i haven't used these stabilizers yet and uh, i'm assuming they're the same as uh, these other ones as well they're goat stabilizers i believe they're they're called they sent me a pack to these two but i thought i was going to need them for this board but apparently it, it comes with the stabilizers which is totally fine yeah, so these are actually well these are these are not gold wires. Um so maybe Yeah, I don't I don't know. These might be the same and these just have the gold the gold stuff on them, but um I'm not sure. These these could be actually different stabilizers. I'm I'm unsure. Maybe someone in chat can confirm or deny. But these do not have any of the gold plated parts, whereas these goat stabilizers do. So Maybe they're the same, just difference of gold plating or versus not, which shouldn't really make a difference. Um, or they could be totally different. But we'll test these out first just to see what they're like. And, you know, it's it's a hot swap board, and it's not particularly hard to disassemble. So if we have to change some things out, um, whether it be today or at a later date, totally fine with me. I don't really care. Gonna try Water Kings on them. They're such a quiet, linear switch. I have never heard of Water Kings. Feel free to link them in chat if you'd like. Uh, okay, well, let's go ahead and put some switches in here, shall we? Put some switches in and uh, maybe throw some caps on. I have no idea what caps I'm going to use either. Um, these, are, these are silks, right? Yeah, okay. So I'll probably use... I don't even think I have enough of these. Uh-oh. How many, how many switches is this? 83 in this board? This one was, this was not thought through. <laughs> um, basically what I mean by that is, I don't usually buy enough switches for a board this size because I almost never build boards this size for myself. So I usually buy like 70 of a switch, maybe like 80. And this board requires more than that. So we're gonna have to, we're probably gonna augment a little bit here. I'm just trying to find what I'm going to augment with. Bear with me please. Maybe I can find something I have enough of, but I'm gonna go ahead and assume I won't be able to. I guess the options could be some dry novel keys switches. Oh, here we go. Here's here's some more silks. They're just the yellow ones versus the black one. We'll just go with that. We'll have a we'll have a, like a little yellow and black thing going on here, I guess. Quakem's discoverer of holy pin. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Maybe. Maybe that's me. Maybe it's not. Alright, so we'll prioritize these uh, these silk blacks. That's what we'll put in the main typing area. And uh, if we have to augment like the arrow cluster, or this over here, and possibly the F keys, we'll use the uh, some leftover yellow silks. When in doubt, buy 100 switches. I'm never in doubt, though, because, like, I like I build 60%s 
almost my entire personal collection. You probably can't see it very well because of the small frame, but I have a bunch of boards here, and I have some more boards over there. Um, almost all of them are 60%. There's like a couple 65s, um, a couple TKLs, uh, 175 of the box 75 over there. Um, and then it's all 60%. I just, I love 60%. That's what I use. So it's, I almost never need more than 70 switches because even that gives me leftover switches most of the time. So it's, it, it's fine. This is the way it is. These switches are basically the same anyways. It's just, uh, the, these stems are yellow and these are black and these use a slightly lighter spring. Otherwise it's the same thing. Um, these will actually look pretty good in here. At least they, they should. By the way, guys, uh, I know I've said this before earlier today, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask away. Um, now's as good a time as any while I'm putting switches in a board. Feel free to ask about the board or other boards or keyboards in general or, uh, you know, outside of keyboards. I'm totally down with that as well. This is a really chill stream and hopefully you guys are, are having a good time. Let me know. I know it's kind of late into the stream, but let me know if the music's too loud for you guys as well. Okay. Obviously on, uh, on a hot swap board, you want to make sure you have all your your switch pins straight too. If they're not straight, you gotta straighten these out, otherwise they can definitely bend when you're popping the switches in. Oh, these go in, these go in really, really smooth, really easily. You'll love that. Now I think this uses a proprietary programmer, but I think it's also compatible with QMK. Maybe someone can confirm or deny that. Um, all new glorious core for GMMK Pro and MOW. What is the MOW? Model, is that like a, a mouse? Model O. All right, so maybe we'll have to, maybe we'll take the, uh, the glorious core software for a bit of a test drive as well. So these are Novel Keys Silk Black switches, and uh, I might be augmenting with some Novel Keys Silk Yellow switches, guys, for anyone that's curious. These are a pre-lubed switch. These are a fully lubed switch from Novel Keys. They're based on uh, the JWK linears, very, very similar. They do have Novel Keys branding on them, though, and they look really lovely. And they're actually pretty good, too. They just, they don't sound amazing. But they could sound okay here. I guess we'll see, huh? I don't want to be too negative before we actually get to the end of this, right? 60% gang rise up? You know it, bro. You know it. Is the color the only difference? Uh, the color and spring weight are the only difference. The yellows are slightly lighter. But we'll put those on the, you know, the, the outside if we need to. I shouldn't have even put that one there. So we'll put, uh, we'll use the blacks in this main cluster and we'll see how many we have left over. You can do GMK via, if I remember correctly, but has its own front end for lighting macros, etc. if you want. Yeah, I'll check out I'll check out the Glorious Core, which is what they call their software. I'd be I'd be a terrible terrible reviewer. I, I mean, I already am a terrible reviewer because I usually don't do produce reviews. But uh, I'd be a terrible reviewer if I didn't actually at least check out the software, right? I mean, I'd like to use Via, if I'm being honest, because I love Via. And so many of my other boards are already in VS, so it's just convenient. But I assume the Glorious Core is, is probably a really easy to use program as well. What materials are silks made out of? I don't know. I think this is, I think they're like the normal JWK blend. 
So probably like some some percentage of polycarbonate, some percentage of nylon, and some percentage of palm, maybe. Um, probably two of those three. Maybe all three. The stems are palm, but stems are almost always palm anyways. Maybe they have a little UHM. It would be nice if you do the day one update on Core and see how easy that is. What is the day one update? I haven't used Core at all, so I have no idea uh, what it's like. I haven't even, I haven't looked at it. This is like as raw as impressions as you're going to get out of me for anything. This is as brand new to me as it is to a lot of you. Got to do firmware update before you use it uh, with their software. Oh, okay. There's a firmware update. Okay. It, does the firmware update in the software? Is that where I update it from or do I have to do it somewhere else? Through core, okay. I'm I'm gonna down. I have core. I have the download screen open at least. I'll just go ahead and download this now, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. Download core, plug in the board, and follow the prompts. Hey, even I can do that. Now that's convenient. All right. What do you guys think about these stabilizers? Are they going to be good or are they going to be bad? I'm a little hesitant. They are lubed, which could be good. But I feel like I feel like it's a real coin flip on if these are going to be good or not. Maybe I should put maybe I should put more trust in Glorious stabilizers. they'll still rattle that's what i'm afraid of too mr petrov i i'm almost i'm almost certain they will but if they don't then i'll be pleasantly surprised uh, exo squid says i just switched them out after testing and put in c3 v2 stabs i wouldn't be surprised if those were better what, am i actually gonna have enough switches here there's a possibility that i have enough switches I think it's a matter of luck at this point. You're not wrong, honestly. Do you have a syringe you can top up the existing lube with? Uh, I could probably find one. I have lots of lube and lots of brushes, at the very least. These have a lot of lube in them. Um, it, it looks like they have more lube than I would use for a stabilizer, at the very least. Maybe, maybe there's 90 of these. I thought there were 70 of these, but now that I think about it, I didn't buy these. Mike sent these to me, so he might have just sent me a pack of 90 instead of a pack of 70. I usually just ask for packs of 70 because they almost never get used otherwise. It's also their own lube. Oh, oh these are lube with G-Lube? Interesting. Yeah, I still haven't tried those. I've heard some people say they're it's pretty meh. It's forgettable. It doesn't really matter. 
Um, I'm sure it's fine. I'm, I'm worried less about the type of lube and the, more about the application of lube because like it doesn't take fancy lube to make stabilizers quiet, right? It, it doesn't. It, you can do it with very, very cheap and expensive dielectric grease even. Um, the, the, the matter is you, you want them not to, to rattle, right? That's the, uh, the goal. I guess I will have enough switches. This is, as the kids say, poggers. This must have been a 90 pack. Mike was looking out for me from the past. He's like, in the future, you're going to need this. What a guy. If they can do non-rattling stabs out of the box, that would be literal magic. I completely agree with you, Mr. Petrov. Completely agree. Alright, now to figure out what keycaps I'm going to put on here. Um, I did just get in Cat Lich the other day. Haven't even taken that out of the box yet. What do you guys think? You want to do, you want to do Cat Lich or in a, uh, in a twist, in a plot twist of the century. A um, little exaggeration there. I do have GMK Bleached, which I got in recently. What do you guys think? I'll, I'll let you guys choose. Press 1 if you want GMK Bleached. Press 2 if you want uh, Cat Lich. Uh, both of which have not even been removed from the box yet. So there you go. One for GMK Bleached, two for Cat Lich. I'll let you guys decide. I'm not going to do a poll because there's not even that many of you here. So just, just type it in chat. I guess that's true. Cherry Profile in general, by extension, GMK will, will be a bit more familiar of a, a sound and feel for most people. So you're, you're, you're not wrong there, Mr. Petrov, that's for sure. Is Cat a unit profile cap? No. Um, Cat is sculpted. However, there is a uniform version called CAM, K-A-M, versus K-A-T. I have yet to see a cat set on a GMMK Pro. I haven't either. <laughs> but that's okay. But it looks like uh, G, the old, good old GMK is, is kind of winning out by a landslide here. Um, which is, you know, to be expected, honestly. So uh, we'll, we'll put GMK Bleach down here. If you guys maybe didn't remember what GMK Bleached is, uh, this is what it looks like. It's an incredibly white set. It uses WS2, which is, uh, as far as I'm aware, the whitest GMK stock color. Um, it's very, very bright. Um, but I actually think it might look kind of good here. Uh, especially with the... We have, like a, we have a black and white... We have an accidental black and white theme going on here. And I'm very okay with that. Oh, you know what's going to come in handy here? This is this is next level. This is going to be for blowing the uh, the potato starch tray uh, remnants off of some of these caps. Because you already know some of them are going to have it. They always do. God damn, that's bright. It is, it is bright. It's 
it's it's yeah there's no getting around it it's just bright um i know it's not for everyone some people straight up despise ws2 personally i like it i'm a really big fan of like really white whites um especially in in keyboard keyboard settings like uh like e-white i like e-white on keyboards a lot This is really white, but my gosh, does it look nice. So waiting on Cat Atlantis. Is that the next one to ship? Atlantis. Or Lucky Jade. I can't remember the, what the queue is like. It's been so long since I've seen that. Oh, it's actually not sounding too bad so far. rubber bellows to habitually clean everything <laughs> this is just gonna be like my new habit i like how oh my god i didn't even realize like the autofocus on the camera this is so white look look at how big of an effect it has on my the contrast of my camera it's like too blinding even for my camera wow I really wish GMK would go back to the old boxes. Yeah. I mean, I know a lot of people want that. I I get it, right? It's kind of frustrating. This packaging is not exactly ideal. Um, at the very least, at the very least, you got to give them props for at least trying to do something, you know, for the actual, um, like, economy, right? Like... Not, not economy, sorry, environment. Wow. Totally different things. But like, you gotta give them props at least for, you know, trying to help the environment. That's what I believe, at least. Like, I know it's not ideal, and most people probably still prefer the old, earlier ones. And, you know, functionally I did too, but honestly I throw them, like, I get rid of them both anyways. Like, they both get, um, like, recycled. Kind of interested to check out the polycarbonate plate. Lunar Sama, Lunar Sama says uh, I prefer the new ones uh, than the plastic ones. Those were held open. I agree. I hated I hated those ones. I really did. Every time I opened them, I broke all the tabs. Like not even intentionally. I just like tried to open them, and the tabs would just like pop out, and like you could never really like unbreak them. <laughs> bit i guess i don't swap keycaps out often as most yeah i mean i don't i never put them back any anyways like i don't 
Like, who has the time to, like, go through and, like, organize each calf in a, in a previous GMK tray every time they take it off a board? Like, I don't. I have too many boards. I have too many sets. I'm not going to do that every time. That's ludicrous. I mean, I guess in a hobby where doing a lot of tedious things is, is kind of normal, it's, it's not totally unexpected. And if someone wants to do that, more power to them. But I am way too lazy for that shit. Are you kidding me? Uh, what is this, six? Is this a 625 space bar? Probably, right? Um, bottom row is... Sheesh, I don't even know. Six, is this 125, 125, 125, 111? I have to look up a picture of this just to... Just want to make sure I'm not going crazy here. I did download the software. All right, yeah, it looks like it looks like one two fives and ones here, and then I'm assuming that this is a six two five. I just looked up the picture. We're, we're good now. I think you love the air squeezy. I kind of do. I'm not going to lie. This is this is one of those products that I feel like is just deceptively good. Because like it'll get way more use than you think it will. At least for me. Um, Alright, what else do I need here? Oh, is this supposed to be like an F13? People use that for like insert or something? What do people normally use there? I don't really care. I'll just put insert there. I don't know if this set has an F13. I'm assuming not, but... Oh, there's... Oh, I didn't realize there was accent, accents here. Maybe we'll try the accents. That's you know, still still very in line with our, uh, our black and white theme here. Oh, I should have went with Bard over Scoop, too. Whoops. Oh, well. I'll leave the Bard or the Scoop on there. It's not a problem. Short shift. We'll do... Control, Alt. Oh, there's an F13. I think F13 looks cooler, even if I don't use it. I think it just, I think it just looks cooler. Oh, these are, these are kind of tight to get in. Don't worry, we'll just pseudo this a little bit. There's very little space to actually, maybe these are just too thick. Let me try the one I normally use. Oh yeah, these are just the glorious keycap puller actually might might not be a good play just because of how thick the wires are. I mean this one isn't ideal either, I guess. Tolerance is very, very tight. Just need to get this bottom corner in. Watch as experienced keyboard enthusiast struggles with half custom keyboard. There we go. I think in the future it might actually just be faster to take off the top, unscrew the eight screws on the bottom, take off the top, and then the, the keycaps will all come off a lot easier. PMS and Chicken, thank you so much for stopping by. Hello to you as well. Thank you so much for the tier 1, 36 months. What a guy. Yeah, but don't worry, we found the F13. We're good. There is an F13. I had no idea it was in there. I don't even... I never know what keycaps come with sets anymore. <laughs> um, Alright, what do I need? We'll do, a, we'll do a 1U code, I guess. Sheesh, I don't know. Uh, what is this? What do people do? Page up, page down. Do... That sounds good. Do we have a... This will work. 
up, paid it down. Sheesh, I don't know. What is that row or two? This is this is how often I build boards with side columns, obviously. Oh, that doesn't work, obviously. Whoops. Do I have a row three page down? Is that a thing? That looks right. There we go. Ah, uh, thankfully there's space in that one. Let's do a page up, do a page down. Um, FN, I guess? I don't know. What do people put up top? Home? What's intended? Oh, it's intended as home, page up, page down, end. All right, we'll, just, we'll go with this. That's fine. I guess we can do, we can do end if we really want to. Looks like in the, uh, the normal layout, FN is down here in the, the bottom right uh, where this, the other GUI key is. Oh my god, I cannot get the... Okay, we're just not taking that off. I don't really care anymore. Uh, I do want to try the accents, though, potentially, because that could look that could look cool, right? Like, what do you guys think? You think that would be good? Wine potato starch. All white? Keep white? All white? Black looks like a hole in your set? You're kind of right. Once I uh, move it closer to the camera, you guys can have a better, better picture of it here. So see, look at all this residual potato starch from these trays. This is ridiculous. Unfortunate, but okay. So you guys, you guys don't want, don't want the uh, the accents here. It looks like there's like so little light on it, but it's like really not the case. Look at all those fingerprints. What switches are being used here? Currently, it is a hot swap board. Um, I do have the Novel Keys Silk Blacks in here. So we're, we're kind of building on this black on white theme. Black keyboard, black and white switches, black and white keycaps. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think the accents could look good, but on stream, you guys are totally right. It's like it, it looks so goofy because it's just so dark. Yeah, I mean, th this key set. Look how it affects my my contrast here. This key set is just so so bright. Gold knob would look good. It really would actually. A gold knob, or is there a white knob? A white knob could look pretty interesting, too. I guess I could use the, uh... The glorious wrist rest that I came with. Um, oh, I need, I need to flip my space bar. What am I doing? What is wrong with me? Sorry for all you guys that don't like split or flip spacebar rather, but I practically need it because I just think it's so much more comfortable. Brand new caps, so these are a bit tight on here. I like this wrist rest actually. I just wish it weren't so big. I wish they were a 60 or a 65% version. Or at least, you know, you know, one that matches this, which would be roughly a 65-75% version. Um, I get it because they sell more TKLs than anything else, so this makes way more sense for them. 
but it's just a bit too bulky for me. This is a little bit more accurate. All right, so we'll take, uh, we'll set the tin aside for now. My office is such a mess right now. Oh my gosh, I can't even, I can't even show you guys. It's so, it's so awful. Flip spacebar, gang. It really is. It really is the way. Represent, guys. Like legitimately. Spread, spread the good word. There's a silver knob, but guitar knobs work. Uh, there's a white anode one out there. There's, there's a white anode, anode one. That's crazy. It's really, it's really hard to anodize white. I kind of thought it was more or less impossible. But Glorious calls silver white, I guess. Yeah. Oh, they do have a 60% wooden wrist rest. That's what they should have sent me. Unfortunate, but that's okay. This one, this one will will get some use elsewhere, either for me or someone else. All right, let's uh, let's plug this in and see what happens. Let me uh, install this software real quick first. run this and see what happens hopefully uh, my computer doesn't explode somehow I'll accept that Eula glorious core yes install we're getting there guys so there's a, a firmware update for this I guess we'll we'll go through that first and we'll we'll see what happens from there Yes, launch. Okay, let's see if I can uh, get this on screen for you guys here. Nope, not, not that. That's not what I'm trying to do. Should have, I should have tried to do this at the beginning, before the stream. Uh, window capture, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, glorious core, there we go. Bam. Capture cursor, yes. You guys want this over my face? I guess that's probably easiest. I guess I can put it down here. I don't know. That's probably good enough. All right. So please connect your glorious products. Let's let's go through this this experience together, guys. Connecting my glorious product. We're setting up GMMK Pro. Thank you. Oh yeah, I forgot it's RGB. Which you probably can't see because of the lighting. Glorious Pro is set up and ready to go. Here we go. Okay, so it shows up here. So, um, what we got here is profiles, apparently. This is presumably to switch between your devices. These little things. Uh, red, green, blue, Pog. Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess so. Um... Do I just click on this? This uh, brings me to my board. Okay, here we go. Uh, lighting, key binding, performance. What is performance? What does that do? Oh, polling rate. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Uh, key binding. Entirely sure how this is intended to work. Why is F6 lit up? Oh, is this. Do you have to like set the buttons one at a time? Oh. 
I don't entirely understand the intent here, but that's okay. We'll we'll get through this. We'll figure this out. What do we got here? No, don't start up on launch. Thank you. Um, retry firmware update. Check for updates. Yes, let's do this. Maybe I need to do this first. This interface looks terrible from a usability standpoint. Um, plug in your GMMK Pro cable. Does it have to be the GMMK Pro cable? Can I not use... I can use this USB, right? Why would I not be able to? This looks like it's gonna take a while. Oh, never mind. I'm not sure what the benefit would have been to be using the uh, the actual GMMK Pro cable. I don't think there, there there shouldn't be a difference. Most gaming software, yeah, I don't really like most gaming software. Uh, successful update. Okay, cool. Um. Fun. Do I have to like relaunch this or are we are we good? I don't really know how to even use this. This looks like it's, I think we're on the top layer right now. So like, if I want to change this to something, how do I, what do I do? Chances are I don't actually need to change any of this, but just for the sense of how the heck do I do it? This isn't like still in beta, is it? Each key, you need to bind one, then press save. Oh wait, seriously? Like, okay, let's say I wanna make this key, I wanna make F13, which is currently a print screen. I wanna make that into A. So I just have to save that. switch hitter as well just so I can see if this is like a real-time kind of thing okay so that that work you have to do that for every key like one at a time seriously I mean, I suppose that works. Try the knob. What does the knob do? Oh, whoops. That's, it looks like it's a, it's volume by default. It's turning up my system volume. What does pressing it do? Oh, that, that mutes. You can hear it mute my music. It's volume controls by default. Um, sorry, I've been trying to figure out this uh, this this software, but I, I think I think we figured it out. It's just maybe not as robust as it could be. Um, let's check out the lighting. What is this glorious mode? Should I? Can you guys even? You guys probably can't even see that. really a hundred percent brightness I 
Quillad, what's up, man? Thanks for stopping by. <clears throat> Huge knob head. <laughs> Quick up just knobbed out of his noggin. I so am. I always am. <clears throat> Do you hate it? Do you love it? I mean, I haven't really used it much so far. We're kind of just checking out the software right now. I just got to put together. I think I'll, I'll fiddle with the software a bit more later. Um, yeah, but it looks like... I don't know if the software is actually done yet. I don't know if it's completed, because I feel like it should be a little bit more intuitive, but um, it is what it is, I suppose. You can't really see the RGB because all the lighting I have. I could go around and turn off all of my lights, and you might be able to see it better, but... There is there is RGB there. It's just hard to hard to see, <clears throat> which makes sense because these are opaque switches. If these were clear switches, um, like let's say I was using Zelios or Telios or you know something with a transparent housing, you would uh, you would see the RGB a lot more. But because I'm kind of not really decking this out for RGB, it's a little bit more uh, difficult to see. The polycarb plate also diffuses the RGB more. Yeah, I can definitely believe that. <clears throat> I don't really care too much about RGB. I know some people do. And that's totally cool, totally fine. Uh, it's just something I, I was into many, 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 many years ago that I kind of stopped caring about. FNW to increase RGB. Is that what it, it's, it's already on the maximum brightness. So I think this is FN by default. Yeah, it's like S tones it down, W brings it up. One more little type. Oh, I'll do, yeah, let me, let me type on it for a second. Let's do that. Because I forgot to, I forgot to do that for you guys. My apologies. Get the mic in there. off this music I turn I turn the I mute, I mute the music just in time to hear some sirens outside <clears throat> just look at the lights the side lights oh yeah you can definitely see the lights on the side yep now the dogs hear the sirens <laughs> there you go we got a little little side RGB going on there that's not bad All right, quick typing test. Hopefully the dogs aren't too loud. All right. So, interestingly enough, um, the spacebar has, like, no rattle. The stabilizer actually came out pretty well. The other the other three have, like, a very, very minor subdued rattle. Um, so, I, pro I probably would swap these out. But it's it's not as... The, the stabilizers are actually better than I was expecting them to be. This is probably the worst one out of them all.
Uh, again, these are JWK switches, and they're not the all palm version. So, um, like many people can probably attest, these generally aren't the best sounding switches, although they do feel really nice. But uh, this will be this will definitely be a board I have to try some different switches in. Uh, maybe lube up some some JWK lavenders. Uh, I like those all palm versions um, a lot better on stuff like this. I'd be really interested in trying out the PC plate as well. I think the PC plate will probably be the better call. If I were buying this board, I probably would buy um, a PC plate along with it because it's only like twenty dollars or whatever. That seems pretty good. I, I wouldn't spend fifty on the brass plate, but that's just me. Uh, I would definitely spend twenty on the the polycarbonate. This is totally fine though. This actually, this honestly feels like pretty good. Um, it it feels like boards more expensive than one hundred and seventy dollars. Feels pretty consistent. It sounds relatively consistent. It looks pretty decent. The knob functions pretty well. It, the knob's actually like really sensitive. Um, maybe a little bit more than I'd like, but I don't know if that's like the way all knobs are. Or maybe it's just this one, but this is still definitely functional enough. It's a bit firm of an experience, but I mean, that's kind of what I assumed going into this. I imagine the polycarbonate would probably be a little softer, but just because of the way this is mounted, I would expect it to still be pretty firm. But I, I'm, I'm actually not unhappy with this at all. This, this is pretty good. If I spent 170 bucks on this and this is what I got, I'd, I'd be very okay with it, actually. I, I tried to set you up for that joke, Mr. Petrov. I, I really hope you appreciated it. So yeah, if you have any questions uh, about this board or anything else, definitely definitely let me know. I'm going to be spending some more time with it. And I'm going to be trying some other switches in it. I, I'll probably pick up one of those polycarbonate plates uh, if they'll let me. Um, and we'll uh, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll do like a part two of this stream where we kind of swap out some of the parts and we try it with some, I guess, some more... I don't know if I want to say more premium switches, but I, I guess better tuned switches. Something a bit different, uh, as well as that polycarbonate plate. I think I think this actually has some potential to it. It feels solid. Um, it's it's relatively heavy as well. Let me weigh it for you guys. The weight's gonna be ever so slightly off because of my desk mat, but that's just kind of the way it goes. Um, otherwise, it's 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 pretty heavy, as you can see. Just over three points, um, or three, three pounds, 11 ounces, um, which is also known as um, one point, just shy of 1.7 kilograms. So really, really a pretty pretty hefty board too it's heavier than i was expecting it to be but it's definitely not overly heavy i think this is the right weight for uh, a product like this and you got to remember like the general audience for this market too um you know the, the people that are going to be buying this board the kind of people that are this is marketed towards are you know not hardened keyboard enthusiasts like myself and a lot of you guys you know that are, are used to spending three four seven hundred dollars on a board and you know, doing all the custom work to it. This is kind of more to bring people into that world, if anything else. It's to give people a, a more premium product than, you know, something like a Corsair or a Cooler Master, or, you know, even admittedly like their normal GMK line, um, which is, while it's a cool product, it's, you know, it, it's it's pretty inexpensive and it, it kind of feels like that as well. But this is, this is a nice step up, honestly. It's nothing mind-blowing. It's nothing we haven't seen before, right? Hot Swap, Perky RGB, good stuff there's a knob there 75 percent it's got some enthusiast grade features but it's still nothing we've never seen before it's nothing totally crazy and out of the or out of the ordinary but i would say you you get quite a bit quite a bit here for 170 bucks i would recommend there's uh there's my verdict it's not gonna blow you away but depending on who you are it might blow you away <laughs> Not too shabby. Needs split backspace? Maybe. 
I think split backspace doesn't really work on 75% as well. Um, I think it suffers the same reason that it suffers on a, a TKL. One, it just kind of looks goofy, in my opinion. And two, it gives you two spots for the tilde, uh, which is kind of awkward. And you end up having to use, like, an odd key here. I wish the GMMK Pro was more readily available. It probably will be at some point, right? I'm not really sure how they're how they're doing it. I know there was like a, a batch one, and they'll probably they'll probably get more in. They'll probably do more runs, and I, I assume it's a product they're gonna want to stock because that would probably be the smart play if they're able to do that. Oh, I've got to check and make sure every key works. Let's uh, let's do that as well. See if I bent any pins. Oh yeah, I mapped that to B. That's why that's B. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. That was just a test. This is an FN. I don't know where any of the FN keys actually are right now, though. This one should work. It's just an FN. All right, well, everything works. You know the knob works, too. Easy peasy. You love to see it. Kind of wish you got the black after seeing this one. What are the other colors it's offered in? Uh, there's... It's just black and white. Is that what it is? Is the white actually silver or is it white? I think the white is silver. I kind of wish there was more options. Is it really just black and white? It's kind of unfortunate, but I mean, I guess those are the two most basic colors. You could have a keyboard. It's fine. Maybe in the future they'll, they'll do more. It'd be cool to get it in like some kind of gray or even some more like vibrant colors. But I guess this is this is a fine start. And I like the direction they're going to. This is honestly kind of an impressive product for the price. Again, it probably won't blow you away, especially if you're a more seasoned enthusiast. But if you're newer to the hobby and you're you know you don't have a ton of money, this could be a pretty good option for you. As usual, I'll probably use this for a week or two and kind of gather my thoughts more on it and I'll have a more solid opinion um, a little bit later on. So just keep that in mind as well. Hopefully someone someone gets this in Via. It doesn't work natively in Via, does it? Even after that update. I guess I should try it just for the sake of it. What harm could it could it cause? None, because it just doesn't show up. All right, that's fine. Yeah, white is silver. Yeah, I don't... Yeah. I wish they didn't call it white, because it's obviously not white. Just call it silver. Like... Just call it silver. You call the other one black, you might as well call this one silver. But it is what it is, I suppose. Uh, is there any other kit offering as much value? <sighs> Sheesh. I don't know... I mean, what other what other competing kits are even out there right now that are, are like this? I mean, you could argue that the NK65 is like, the aluminum edition is like sort of a competitor. I would say that's very much a comparable board uh, in terms of like quality. EQ68, I, I haven't tried that yet. So I, I wish I could comment, but I just, I haven't tried it. And I would feel wrong trying to make assumptions about it. Like, there's very few, I feel like, in this kind of, like, middle area where it's, like, sort of entry level, uh, you know, depending on your perspective and sort of kind of mid-range or, you know, to some people this could even, you know, constitute as a high-end board. Um, obviously my view on it is a little skewed because I've been in the keyboard hobby for so long and I've tried so many boards in a wide range of quality and 
I don't know, to, to me this feels a little bit more of the, the kind of mid-range, like kind of starting to border on the uh, the entry level stuff, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And yeah, final verdict so far, at least for this first un unboxing and impressions, I would say I'm pretty happy with this. I think it looks decent. I think the quality is pretty good. It's consistent. The mounting system is actually pretty robust. I mean, you guys saw how many gaskets actually were inside there. It was kind of impressive, honestly. I like how the plate and PCB assembly is uh, is kind of screwed together as well. I definitely wouldn't... I wouldn't hesitate to recommend this to someone if this kind of thing is what they were looking for. Gets the, uh, gets the thumbs up from me. Alright guys, well, if there are no closing questions, I did see actually one from Bobby McBobby here. Any group eyes coming up for keyboards that interest you? Um, uh, let's see. Well, one of them's running right now, which is the Wilbatech Salvation on Novel Keys. I'm really interested in that board, and I do plan to pick one up. So, you guys will get my thoughts on that once that ships, obviously. Um, let's see, what else is coming up? Uh, the Invictus from Fropsy, I think is kind of an interesting, an interesting take. Um, let's see, what, what else is coming out? There were, I think there are other things that I've been kind of looking forward to, but those those two are probably uh, the, the main two right now. The Invictus and the Salvation. And the Invictus is upcoming and the Salvation is currently running. There's probably others, but man, there's always just so many things happening. It's hard to, it's hard to keep up, right? Mexon deck. Is that Chewy on that account? What's up, man? <laughs> like looking into a sexy mirror. You're too kind, man. Too kind. I just gotta. I'm trying to get. I'm growing my hair. I'm growing all of my hair out because of you. I want to look more. I want to look more Viking like you. Just you know the the real the real absolute pinnacle of man. That Chewy is. Beard gang rise up. You know it, guys. You know it. All right, guys. Who are we? Who are we rating? I guess that's the question. Before everyone just runs out of here. We'll raid Keeb Noob. She was in here earlier. Yeah, we'll go with we'll go with Keep Noob. All right, guys. Strap yourselves in for a bit of a raid. Um, if hopefully you guys had uh, a good time. It was it was actually pretty fun. Thanks you guys for uh, for hanging out for coming along. I appreciate it. And uh, if you have any questions, check below. You can find a link to our Discord. I'm very often there. You can ask me anything you want. And uh, yeah, if you have questions about this, definitely feel free to ask those as well. I'll be using it over the next week or so and putting it through its paces to uh, gather a bit more of an opinion on it. Because obviously today was just kind of my my first impressions. But uh, we'll see where that goes. And uh, thank you all for watching. And uh, let's go say something wholesome to Keeb Noob. Let's go, guys. I'm going to queue up this raid here. Let's get ready for this raidy raid raid. <laughs>